Thank you for joining me. My name is Carlos. Uh, today we're going to be discussing different aspects of bodybuilding, lifting, and diet. <clears throat> and going over today's workout routine that I will be presenting, which is a arm and shoulder isolation day workout. So, uh, let's just get right into this. But before we do, don't forget to have a sip of coffee. Look at this mug. I love this mug. Pure black coffee. No cream, no sugar, no vanilla, no strange flavors, just coffee. Simple old me. So, today's workout. Let's start somewhere. Today's workout. Isolation work. Isolation work. Shoulders and arms. They get their own day. I've been, the last few episodes I have spoken uh, to the subject of training splits. Why is, why do people do different training splits? Why don't I do a full body? Why don't I do push-pull legs or upper-lower? Because I am at a point where I need more volume for each body part, and so a full body just doesn't give me enough time in the gym to be able to apply sufficient volume and intensity to every single body part. And that's the other thing. If you're lifting heavy, if you are at a point where you have progressed with your weights and you are hitting PRs and you've been training for years, and you are, it takes more time to recover from heavy weights than lighter weights. Say your bench press is 185, 165, 200, but now you're benching 275. It takes longer to recuperate from that session where you lifted 275 to 185 almost exponentially. So you're not going to be well served by doing 275s three times a week and trying to progress if you're trying to hit 300. You need to rest. You need to rest and recuperate to be able to achieve greater strength. If you are a leisure lifter, this episode is not for you. You can listen in, but I'm not into leisure lifting. I'm into making this a very serious sport, a very serious hobby, a central aspect of my life and career. So, lifting heavy requires greater recuperative powers. It, re it requires more time to recuperate. Also, you don't get the benefit of growth when you just do one or two sets. When you're lifting heavy, you have to do more sets to reach those top sets. Say you're doing a hack squat with five plates. You don't reach that hack squat in two, in two sets. Let's warm up with one plate. Yeah, throw the five plates on there. No, you got to go like one, two, you know, maybe you might do a big jump, but I take it one plate at a time. So it takes a little bit more time to get to the five plates. And then I do different exercises. I do more exercises for that muscle to increase the muscle, uh, the workload volume. And so that is the rationale of segmenting your body. And now we're at the point where, where we have arm day. We need an arm day all by itself. And I include shoulders in there. Now I don't do the heavy over presses on shoulder day because I am very focused on the incline Smith bench press and making progress there. So, intensities with these isolation exercises. How heavy should you go? Uh, well, it's in my book, uh, you should go as heavy as possible. You should lift as hard and as heavy as you can. I'm part of a, uh, I, I, I'm part of several groups. One of these is the older 50, over 55 group. And every time I put up a lifting video, like this week I put up the lifting video doing 125 pound Z-bar curl, which is the 45 pound plate on each side, going like this, like just really repping fast. And the negative feedback from that was like, you're going to get injured. Okay, you are speaking to your own insecurities there. Look, I'm not getting injured. I haven't been injured. I'm doing fine. Uh, I agree with those who would say lift lighter weight. Again, leisure lifters who have or are clueless, truly clueless on how to build true muscle mass. They've been in the gym for 30 years, going off and on, doing these fluffy little, foofy little routines with cables and never really progressed, never got into powerlifting. They don't really know what serious lifting is. And they're giving this advice about lifting lighter weights. You know, you have to be very patient on the internet. You're going to get, a, you know, theoretically, Eight billion different opinions, but stay your own course. So, if you are serious about lifting, 
If you are serious about making gains, you should be trying to lift as heavy and as hard as possible. That is the nature of this game. It is not to work easy. It's like, okay, we're going to build an incredible physique. We want to get as large and as muscular and as dense as possible and as strong as possible. And we're going to do that by lifting very light weights on levered machines and cables. Because we saw a training video back from the 80s and Lou Ferrigno was doing cable, curl, uh, cable flies. And of course he had the massive chest. And so cable flies is the way to go. And don't go too heavy because you might get injured. <clears throat> okay. If you never trained heavy, you're never going to develop the, uh, the equipment, the hardware, the body to withstand that type of uh, work. So you're always going to be maintaining at a very, very lower mediocre level. So don't take the advice that you might hear out there to lower the weights. Don't lower the weights. It's all about increasing the weights. And this is called progressive overload, guys. So progressively overload your weights. Now I go on these forums and endless discussions. Oh, there's so many ways to achieve progressive overload. It's not all about lifting heavier weight. And you know, what's the spirit? What's, what's the underlying motive behind a statement like that? Well, they don't want to lift heavy. They want to find any other pathway except lifting heavier weight to achieve the end result. And that's why somebody would say there are many other pathways, like you can do more time under tension. I spoke to a fellow yesterday who was admiring this one fellow, his uh, training buddy, who's deep into eccentrics. Oh, man, this guy he just does negatives. He, man, he's like really just the negatives. So he'll like, they're just negatives. Everything is negatives. Well, this is body, this is uh, weight lifting, not weight lowering. You know, here, we're at the farm, guys. We're going to unload a bale. Yeah, just everything's going slowly down. You know, like, okay, everything is just like, we're not lifting weights, we're lowering weights. So everything is like ass backward, ass backward. Why? Because fundamentally, at a very basic principle level of structure, people do not understand that this is about effort and the effort in lifting heavier and heavier weight. So say you're doing a delt front raise. And you got by doing 15 to 20 pounds. With 20 pound dumbbells, you got some good workouts in in the past. You got those delts pumped. You look at yourself in the mirror, you got a little vein there going. And wow, the 20 pounds are great. And so I think, you know, 20 pounds, is that's it, man, 20 pounds. And three years later, you know, maybe you went up to 25, but it felt a little bit challenging. It was a bit awkward. You had to swing it up a little bit, get some body English. So you lowered the weight, especially if somebody out there said, lower the weight. Do it properly. And so he comes back to 20 pounds, and he's there forever. He's doing the 20 pounders. Where in reality, you see a top bodybuilder, none of them are weak. They all train very heavy weights, and some of them quite sloppy with a lot of body English. But what is the purpose? They're overloading with a lot of weight. And what's the result? Bigger muscles than yours. Bigger muscles than mine because I'm still not at that level. So instead of doing these comfortable, I'm really used to these 20s getting a nice pump and it's all about the pump and blood flow to your muscle and it's blood flow and it's a pump giveth, a pump taketh. No real myofibular uh, construction of true muscle density. It's just infusion of blood and then the blood retracts and goes away, it collapses, the pump goes away. And what are you left with? The same strength you had before. You have not made any gains. You are lying to yourself. You are believing the illusion. Just not, I follow the little mirage over there. Oh, that looks so good. I'm pumped lifting the same weights. If you're getting pumped and getting that nice view by progressive overload, great. You can actually point to an achievement. Yeah, I used to do 20 pounders. <clears throat> I'm doing 45s now. Moved up to 50s. So in this video, I do 50 pound dumbbells. 50s. By the grace of God, they're fe feeling as easy as the 35s. And no, I'm not swinging the weights like this, like, you know, you know, swinging through the jungle. No, dead stop. A little bit of, you know, call this a little bit of body English. And then, you know, still have to lift with this muscle here. And it's getting thicker. It's getting bigger. 
So I started out with the 35s and graduated to the 40s. In a few weeks, I was doing 45s, and now it's 50s. Progressive overload, working. And the other thing, you develop greater skill and coordination in managing the weight. Is this important? Absolutely. Especially for you older guys out there that are so fond of critiquing. Man, my peers, I'll be 60 next year. Everybody that I know, almost everybody that I know my age that lifts weights is scared of being injured. They're just being beaten down by just doing the lower weights. And they're really good at critiquing somebody else who's putting in a lot more effort. Uh, hey, mate, you're going to hurt yourself. Oh, my shoulders, uh, I wince when I see you lift. I wince. Of course, their shoulders are fucked up. They have messed themselves up by doing improper angles that they were taught in the gym and never figured out on their own how to do their own angle for their own personal biometrics. Oh, you do the shoulder press like this. Ouch, that would hurt me. I flare my elbows. You don't flare your elbows, it'll hurt your, elbow, it'll hurt your shoulders. It doesn't hurt mine. My shoulders are benefited by doing this, this wide ass thing. Now I find a lot of people have the same issue as me. They were almost injured doing the way they were taught in the gym or saw in a video. Now they do it the completely opposite way where they were told they would be injured and now they are rehabbed. So, fitness world, the kingdom of lies and disinformation. That's what this is, man. If there was a one of the, maybe a military psyop and fitness. You get into fitness, first of all, everybody has an opinion, right? Because, man, you got to have an opinion. And second, some people are just outright liars, and they have an axe to grind. And so they have to promote a certain spiel, a certain angle. You might say, well, that's what I'm doing. And that, yeah, that could be, except for this one fact. I am actually making progress. I track my lifts. I am lifting much more than I was four months ago. More than I was a month ago. This week I hit PRs. PRs. Personal records. I have never lifted those weights before in my life. Not when I was 35. Not when I was 43 or 50 or 20. Never. Now at 58 years old, I am lifting heavier, harder than ever. Why? Because I have taken the time to stick with progressive overload. And you should too if you really are serious about enhancing your life. If you take lifting seriously, and I think that there really isn't any reason not to. I'm a leisure lifter. I just like to go to the gym and well, that's, that's fine. That's okay. Right? That's great. Okay, whatever. But if you're serious about being the best that you can, you have to really intensify your weightlifting. You have to up your game. Don't stay with a two-plate bench press forever. It's like you're left there forever. Do everything you can to find a way to graduate to 245. That's a big jump. That's an important jump. Okay, a little bit about the diet. I've been tracking for the last three months, two months, like we're week 9, 10, 11. I started on the 10th of, my diet started on the 10th of January. What is this today? The 23rd of March. So we're about, uh, you know, 9, 10 weeks into the diet. And I've been dropping just like a machine. Like it's been dropping first uh, bi-weekly, three, uh, three pounds, three pounds. Then it dropped down to two, two, then 1.9, 1.9. And then in the last week, I've been dropping a little bit too quickly. So I did a refeed. I did a video on refeeds and investigated a little bit more into the subject. What's a refeed? What's a cheat meal? Refeeds are glycogen loads. Cheat meals are fat loads. By and large, performance-based athletes, people who are serious about their lifts, do not do cheat meals. They do not fat load. By and large, it has its place, but oh, very infrequently and less than you can imagine. What we do is refeeds, which is the same diet food that we are eating day in, day out, but we eat a lot more of it. Why? Because we need to get more carbohydrate glycogen into our muscles. We don't want to be depleted too much if we are taking our time. In, in our particular case, we're not trying to get shredded for a competition. 
we're trying to lower our body weight to the minimum that we can over time without losing performance. What does that mean? Continuous gains on my lifts. Continuous gains. Every single workout sees some parameter increase. And you cannot do that if you are depleted, doing hours of cardio, and just really taking your body to extremes because you're hardcore. And, you know, what is that? What's the end result? A diminished physique, an anemic, weaker spirit, a fatigued person. And, of course, this is the epitome of, of like, a physique. I deal with animals. I have a ranch. I deal with cattle, with horses, with pigs, and all kinds of animals. And I would never, ever, ever do to an animal if I was trying to showcase, like, the most beautiful, muscular, lean, healthy animal, even a chicken, I mean, whatever animal it might be than what human beings would do to themselves to supposedly look their best. It is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Why? Because, sure, the shredded lean muscle is, is attractive, I guess. Not to me. I, I like, me personally, I like the full off-season humongous, like, dense, hard, veiny look, but not the diminished, like, weakened skinny skin and bones type of very lean look that's not it especially as men get older it's more common and throughout history mostly people have died from a nation uh, from from hunger like just they wither away so seeing a person with their ribcage skin and bones and really just emaciated and maybe muscular is not an uncommon sight what is uncommon is to see a person getting Older, getting fuller, thicker, wider shoulders, gnarly back, smaller waist, flared, you know, um, quads, and just getting bigger, more muscular, larger. <clears throat> that, in my personal opinion, is a much better state than the emaciated, really drawn out look. And all this to say that the refeed has the purpose to stop the attrition and the catabolic state that the body may go into. We, I am absolutely obsessed about not losing muscle on a cut. It is easier to lose muscle than fat if you don't do this properly. So be very careful. Refeeds. Now, don't over-refeed because your weight will spike up three or four pounds on the averages. And it will stay there, it can stay there for a bit. Like, this is like the fifth day after my refeed, fourth day. And I'm just now starting to drop like the half pound, quarter pound a day again. So, getting back to our pre-refeed. Um, now, if you're competing, if you are trying to go for some prize money, or you are just dead set on, yeah, just competing in bodybuilding, and this requires you to get as unhealthy and as shredded and as low body fat as humanly possible, then that's a different story. You're going to have to abuse your body. You're going to have to abuse it, unfortunately, because your competitors are all abusing your, their bodies. And that, I guess, this is the state of, the present state of bodybuilding in this day and age, which will not last forever. This won't be the universal eternal criteria for a beautiful body. But for now, people must abuse themselves to achieve a certain look that they say, well, that's the competitive, that's the, that's the shine right there, hard, lean, dry, and inside, messed up, you know, <laughs> every single marker skewed, blood work skewed, you know, unhealthy kidneys, everything just screwed up, but on the outside, the illusion, the veneer, because man sees on what's on the outside, God sees what's inside, the veneer is what's the most important in this day and age. This age of lies, disinformation, bullshit. Stay healthy, stay strong, stay as, as, as muscular and as hard and, as you can, and sure, lose the body fat. Do it slowly, do it slowly, as slow as you can. The more disciplined you are with tracking macros, your calories, and staying on point with your food and not cheating, 
the slower you can take this and not lose muscle and actually gain muscle while losing fat. So anyways, that'll be all for today. I'll leave you with the training video narrated after this presentation. Thank you for joining me in this rant. I know it might upset a lot of people. Uh, I hope so. I really do. For other people, it might be a wake-up call. For other people, it might say, yeah, sure, yeah, right on. I agree with everything he says. It doesn't really matter that much to me what people think. What does matter is that the truth be known and that you, that you out there who are listening to me, find your own way to be the best person and the best physique that you can have. Okay, God bless everybody. We'll see you in our next episode. And don't forget to subscribe. So today, arm and shoulder day, high volume day. We don't really do compounds on these um, high volume isolation type work days. Nonetheless, depending on our energy and our mental state, I do try to go as heavy as possible. So for the last couple of weeks, I've been warming up and doing the biceps Z curl as the first exercise. And I'm getting pretty comfortable with the uh, heavier weight. 125 pound on the Z bar is moving quickly. But anyways, moving up here with the um, doing a very slow progression because these are our initial warm up sets to the entire routine. I didn't really take the time to do cardio before the workout. Here we're up to 105 pounds. And here my concern basically is to do the rep not only as strict as possible, but also get in considerable velocity into the movement. That doesn't mean momentum. That doesn't mean swinging the weight. That means exerting as much effort into the, into the velocity of the contraction as possible. It takes skill. It's a coordination thing more than can be seen on camera. You really have to connect with the muscle to it's not really grinding it out. It's just making sure you're contracting as fast as possible. And the weight is moving much easier than it was a few months ago or even last year. Progressive overload works, guys. It does work. If you keep on lifting with the heavy weight, it does work. Now, here, this is a variation of the skull crusher. A lot of people would say, you know, you have to bring it down to the bridge of your nose. That's old school. Sure, you can do that. If you, eventually, you can't really use heavier weight. If you want to do that, you'll eventually end up hurting your elbows. You get tendonitis. And the other thing is that the triceps is involved with the lat um, to a certain degree. So by doing the pullover movement, you will engage the triceps. Here we go to our main shoulder exercise on the isolation day, which is rear delts. You really want to build up the rear delts as much as you can. It is, uh, by and large, a neglected body part. I don't really neglect it, though. I do spend... And I always train my rear delts when I do delt day. So here we're working with uh, 35ers. We go up to 45, 50 pounds. And um, you know, I was feeling pretty good, just doing lots of reps, lots of sets, and just really trying to focus on the, on the burn, you know, just making sure that the muscle is actually engaging. And yes, you can use a heavy weight for these exercises. Now here we move to the one, uh, to the, what do you call this, alternating biceps dumbbell curl with the 45 pounders. And I hear some comments, people are really hung up on super strict form, and I could disagree more. If you're really, you know, that hung up on strict form, you will never, ever, ever be using heavier weights. And some people say, well, you don't need heavy weights. If you want to get strong, you do. If you want to build muscle, you sure be trying to progressively overload the weights. Anybody who's really trying to avoid lifting heavy will find millions of excuses for lifting lighter. And it shows on their physiques. Uh, here we're using 50-pound dumbbells for our concentration curls. Again, this is a skill. This takes time and training uh, to perfect. You don't, you're not born perfected with any skill or movement. You have to work extensive hours on the movement to build it up. And so here, it's moving a lot better than even a month ago, where I started out with five or six reps with this weight. Struggling, it was like kind of awkward, a bit clumsy. Not saying it's perfect yet, but it's moving better. I mean, I can feel that the practice and the dedication to just using one weight is actually paying off. So here we go to our front delts. 
Some people will say fret delts are unnecessary if you're doing heavy pressing movements. Again, I vehemently disagree. I was in that camp also. I, I never did front delts. And my side delts got a bit more overdeveloped, and I really didn't get the front delt development that I was looking for in spite of doing three plates on the bench press and some heavy overhead shoulder presses. And then, you know, I go and investigate, and I see all the top bodybuilders, no matter how much they bench press, they're all doing front delt raises in spite of what internet, you know, opinions would, you know, say. Top pros use the front delt. Why? Because to build out specific muscles, you need to isolate them in conjunction with your other compounds. So here the, uh, the lighting is terrible. Uh, we don't get this uh, perfect every time. I have to be careful with that lighting. It's just this shit lighting right there with the, the backlighting is horrible. Please forgive me for that. And um, here we're starting off with like 35 pound dumbbells, really trying to focus on the mind muscle. It's not, some people say, well, he's swinging the weight. You know, swinging the weight is when you bring it, you know, behind your back and you roll it like a pendulum. And it's actually the momentum, like a pendulum, that's lifting the weight. I'm doing a dead stop here, guys. Learn how to, you know, view and observe. This is a dead stop. Dead stop. Bring it to a dead stop and lift. Sure, a little bit of body English to get the movement going. But then you try to hold it on the top for a split second. And don't really concentrate on the eccentric, like on the negative portion with this exercise, just trying to get strong on it. So now we're doing 50 pound dumbbells. Worked up from 35s to 40s. Last couple of weeks have been using the 45s and they felt pretty good. In fact, I got 17 reps last week. And here with the 15s, you know, I managed to get 50, uh, 15 reps with the 50s. And so obviously, and I can see the definition is coming in. It is improving the look of the front delt. I didn't have that line there before. It's, this is at, you know totally from the front delt work. Nothing to do with my bench press or incline bench or anything like that because it would have happened by now. It's only happening now I'm doing the front delt raises. So when you find something that works for you, keep at it. Everybody has an opinion, and if you're going to be guided by people's opinions, you're, you're lost, basically. You have no hope of ever achieving anything because you're not following your path. You're not doing the things that you know you need to do. You're listening to people's opinions. And, you know, it's pretty much a waste of time. So here I know that this is working for me. And somebody said, man, you're struggling. You should lower the weight. I couldn't conceive of a, of a more asinine backward statement than to criticize somebody for struggling with the weight. This is what it's about. Without struggle, there is no strength. What an absurd statement to say somebody is struggling with the weight. If you're not struggling, actually, you're not really working. You know, so how should it be? It's like, no, we don't struggle. We, this is like really easy for me. Well, increase the weight and you'll struggle a little bit and you'll have to overcome and that will require, will require greater effort. Now, in the effort is where the gains are being made. So, again, if you're not struggling, if it looks too easy, it is. Bring up the weight. Weightlifting, it's about the weight. The greater the weight, the more muscle you'll build, the more mechanical tension you'll build into your exercises, into your movement. The faster you move the weight, the heavier the weight, the more mechanical tension is accrued and created. So, here we're doing just a lot of volume for the front. We did a drop set from 50s down to 35s and finished with a 10-pound dumbbell. That 10-pound felt ridiculously heavy at the end. It was like I couldn't move my arm. I literally couldn't raise my arm even without the 10-pound dumbbell. And that's when you know that you're cooked. Set is done. Move on to something else. Here we're doing 50-pound dumbbells for the one-arm triceps extension. I could barely get two reps a couple of weeks ago. And it was more of a coordination issue. Now we got five. Now here we're doing a drop set to take full advantage of the, um, of the exercise. Bring it down to 35 pounds from 50 down to 35. And, uh, you know, just do as many reps as possible. I don't really count out the I count the reps just to keep track. But not, you know, I hit 10 and then I stop. No. I do as many as I can. And then, you know, here do a third drop. And I think this was a 20 pounds. So we went from 50 to 35 down to 20 pounds to do the last few reps, as many as possible. And of course, by this time, the tricep is very congested. It's pumped. 
Let me go to the other side, do the same. Left arm is a little bit, uh, I wouldn't say weaker. Again, it's more of like a coordination central nervous system thing of just practicing getting used to handling the 50 pound. So here I think I did one less rep than on the right side. And again, same drop set scheme, 50s, 35s. And, uh, you know, I have to confess, my left side did feel less coordinated than the right. So I need to practice a little bit more, perhaps start off with the left side. And it's strange because in the past, it's actually been the other way around where my left side would be stronger than my right. And it's just, you know, certain periods of time, you, you predominantly use one side more than the other in, you know, certain cases. In my case, this, has, this was the situation. But in any case... In any, in all cases, we're having you know fun with cases today. These isolation movements, one arm at a time, isometric, isolaterally, are really, really beneficial for building muscle. Here we go to our last exercise of the session: the rear delts on the pec deck. Now, here I um, originally I would do my arms like fully straightened out and have the hands as far away from my torso as possible. And I found that by actually uh, bending my elbow and bringing it like you see there, like exactly like bending the elbow, the force is more concentrated on the rear delt. So here I'm working on what I feel. And as I change my hand position and elbow position, I'm getting greater fatigue and contraction on the target muscle, which is the rear delt. And so... You know, in theory, the longer you extend the hand out, the more the more difficult it is. But here, it it just feels more natural to bring it in closer and just you know move the weight up a little bit. You get more torque, you get more force onto the target muscle, and it's you know it's obviously working. You know, I can I can see my delts are being built up, my upper back, everything is improving with these sequences of exercises that I've been employing. And uh, here we're just doing straight sets, going up from, uh, I think it was 75 to 85 to 115 pounds. And then we did a drop set. So this is our drop set. Very easy to do on pin-loaded machines. Well, that be all, guys. Uh, thank you for joining me in this journey. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, hit, you know, like, post notifications, leave a comment. And uh, I hope this video has been instructive and helped you out with your journey and we'll see you in our next episode god bless everyone out there <laughs>